CTV News at 6 with Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Victoria police are investigating an early morning stabbing along the gorge that has sent one person to hospital. Few details are being released, but police have confirmed that two people are in custody. Around 9 o'clock this morning, police were called to a building on the 100 block of Gorge Road East. There are unconfirmed reports that a woman was stabbed. One man was seen in handcuffs being escorted by a police cruiser from the scene. Police had the area taped off for more than an hour as they investigated the incident. Again, a few details released tonight, but it's believed the victim is a woman who is suffering in hospital. We will, of course, have more information when it becomes available. There has been an arrest in the investigation into the homicide of Daniel Jordan Levesque. The Vancouver Island Integrated Major Crime Unit has arrested Joshua Tyler Brado for first-degree murder. Levesque was murdered in an apartment building back in August of last year in Victoria. Brado was arrested yesterday in Okotoks, Alberta. He was originally charged with second-degree murder, but that charge was stayed back in December of last year. The investigation continued after the charge was stayed and after new information emerged, Crown Counsel laid a first-degree murder charge. That was on Friday. Brado is currently in custody in Victoria and is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow. Moving now to Nanaimo, where a tragic story of loss is getting a dose of holiday spirit. This week, CTV News brought you the story of an Ontario woman who traveled to Nanaimo in her van. The vehicle was stuffed with all her personal belongings, what she needed for a fresh start to life. But her hope for that new life on Vancouver Island was shattered when the vehicle burned down at a downtown gas station. She lost everything. But as CTV Scott Cunningham shows us, the kindness of a few strangers is pulling her from the ashes. Oh. These are not old friends. Hello. <laughs> they are strangers bound by tragedy. An engine malfunction gives a spark this week that would completely destroy one woman's van in downtown Nanaimo. No one is hurt, but flames take all her worldly belongings. Crazy, it's surreal. A million emotions, none of them good. Consumed in flame, this van was Victoria Sato's home and had been since she moved to Nanaimo weeks before. The blaze took more than her possessions. It stole her hope for a new life until today. I couldn't turn away to think that she would be left with nothing. I've had a second chance in my life and I really needed to pay it oh, to someone you. else. Two women are prepared to help dust the ash from Victoria's memory. It felt so wonderful to give somebody something that they so need and are so determined to start a new life. Before she even arrived at a local woman's shelter, these two women were plotting authoring their own plans to help recapture the life she came to Vancouver Island for. I'm anxious to reassure her that people in Nanaimo care and won't stand by and let her be without. Right now, I think you need money to get you through the next few months. Yeah. One has rallied a church in Ladysmith to donate. The other will set up a victim's trust fund at Coastal Communities Credit Unions, which can be donated to after Christmas. It is support, Victoria is certain, has little to do with the season. It's not just Christmas, I'm sure. It's, it's the spirit in Nanaimo. And everything to do with the people she now calls friends. Scott Cunningham, CTV News, Nanaimo. And some more holiday giving to tell you about tonight, this time from our partners at 107.3 Cool FM. The month-long Food for Families campaign is wrapping up. This week, Cool FM helped out broadcasting live from the Hillside Thrifties in three days, the Cool FM team collected $23,000 in cash and over 5,000 pounds of food. Over the month, Thrifty Food Stores collected over $200,000 in donations to help families in need this holiday season. A big congratulations to Thrifty Foods and to everyone uh, at Cool FM. A search and rescue mission near Duncan ended safely this morning after two people hiking on Marble Mountain needed help. The two called Duncan RCMP, who then reached out to 19-wing Comox using a helicopter. The two were located shortly after 1 a.m. this morning. They were then hoisted to safety and transferred to a nearby sports field where they were then rushed to hospital. They are in okay condition. Rescue crews on Vancouver's North Shore were able to reach a snowboarder stranded near Cypress Bowl around 1 a.m. 
The border had gone out of bounds yesterday afternoon and got lost in a steep ravine just north of Horseshoe Bay in West Vancouver. How are you doing? I'm uh, pretty well now. Yeah? Yeah, I just want to say thanks for, uh, for, for help and thanks North Shore Rescue Team doing the better job, best job. And uh, tell everybody just don't do this mistake, don't go behind the boundary. And Cypress Mountain officials say it's not possible to go out of bounds on the area's slopes without passing a number of signs and a rope barrier. On Tuesday, rescuers picked up 33-year-old Sebastian Boucher from the mountain after he took a wrong turn snowboarding and ended up lost for two nights in freezing temperatures. They said they planned on billing Boucher $10,000 to help meet the rescue team's expenses. Back on the island, it took several hours for traffic to flow, but the Malahat did reopen around 5 o'clock last night after a rock slide just north of Ice Cream Mountain. The rock slide occurred around 3 yesterday afternoon, shutting down the highway completely for about an hour. Single lane alternating traffic opened at 5, but for drivers in the long lineups, it certainly didn't feel like it. By 10 o'clock last night, there were still reports coming in saying there was people, or there were people, stuck in traffic. A transportation ministry engineer was called to check the cliff face for stability, but his analysis was inconclusive, so a geotechnical expert was called in around 5.30 to give another opinion. Today, traffic was open, but the Ministry of Transportation says it may have to close the Trans-Canada Highway briefly tonight to remove any loose rock. The province recommends anyone planning to travel to Malahat tonight to check drivebc.ca first. Also from the Malahat, in an unrelated matter today, there were delays southbound around 4 o'clock this afternoon after a car was in a ditch near the mountain. And emergency crews were on the scene, and we will uh, bring you more on this when it becomes available. Well, if you're flying out of Victoria International Airport, give yourself a little extra time with the holiday travel rush. Parking is at a premium. The regular lots are full, and drivers are now being directed to overflow lots and being transported to the airport by shuttle. For more information, uh, if you're flying out of Victoria, you can go to victoriaairport.com. Now to Santa Claus. He just stays away from the busiest day of his year. But today, instead of laying low and resting, preparing for his worldwide chimney trek, St. Nick laced up the skates. Very nice board squeeze by cameraman Steve Coulterman, who laced up the skates today. A few hundred people turned out for the free skate with Santa at the Save on Foods Memorial Center. With two days to go, everyone is getting excited. Well, you know, they've all kept their rooms clean this year. It's been a pretty great year. We got two more sleeps to go, and then we got the big day. I asked Santa Claus for Claus for yarn because I like to do stuff with yarn. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just like uh, skating out on the pond again and uh, just like being a kid. And for you, what did you ask Santa Claus for this year? Well, uh, princess and voila. Donations were also being accepted for the mustard seed. If you'd like to donate in the coming days, you uh, well, you have tomorrow, uh, you can go to mustardseed.ca. With two more sleeps, the dream of a white Christmas may be quickly fading for many on the South Island. There was a snowfall warning in effect for the east coast of Vancouver Island. The Comox Valley had another 14 centimeters of snow, with some areas getting an even larger dump. Mount Washington is leading the world charge for ski resorts with one of the deepest in the world, with well over 400 centimeters at its base. These photos were taken today from Mount Washington. Over the next 24 hours, there could be a few more flurries inland, especially for the North Island. But for the South Island, if you were hoping for a whiteout Christmas morning, uh, we've got some not-so-good news for you from the person who knows best. Unfortunately, we don't look like we're going to have a, a white Christmas in Victoria. It's just too warm, even though there are some areas on Vancouver Island that are enjoying snow uh, here and there over the next 24 hours. Once again, in Victoria, it's just not getting cold enough. So we're going to have our typical normal green Christmas. Finally tonight, a happy birthday to a very special lady. If you're looking for the secret to a long life, you need to have a chat with Langford's Merle Barwis. Today, Merle turned 112 years old. That makes her Canada's oldest known citizen. This year, for her party, the Barwis family asked for a little privacy, which we were happy to give them. But tonight, we are still going to wish Merle a very happy birthday. You like a cold beer, Merle? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> 
It was this day last year that I had the privilege to take part in Merle's 111th birthday party. She showed off her 38 grandchildren and many great and great great uh, grandchildren. Uh, just like last year, Merle and her family got together at the Priory Hospital in Lankford today. Merle loves to dance and ride horses. And when we asked her last year what her secret was to such a long life, she told us... Work and clean and ride horses. <laughs> There you go, Merle Barwis. Happy birthday on turning 112 years old. And before we go, we do want to show you one photo. The Barwis family sent this in uh, just after 1 o'clock today. The whole family was there for Merle's birthday, the 112th birthday party. Happy birthday, Merle Barwis. Uh, congratulations. Quite the feat. And we look forward to speaking to you uh, in the new year.